And off we go into pH. We've been talking about acids and bases. We looked at some of the indicators and reactions. Check those out. Take some more time with that Prezi if you haven't seen it before. We looked at some definitions. Arrhenius, Bronsted, and Lowry. We looked at strong versus weak acids and bases. Okay, make sure you know those strong ones. We looked at Lewis acids and bases. We've got a couple of Khan Academy videos you can look at. Here's some answers to a worksheet study guide I gave you earlier. Today, though, focuses pH and pOH, which you may not have heard of before, but you've probably heard of pH. You were probably told pH goes from 1 to 14, 7 is neutral. Uh, the 7 being neutral part is correct, but 1 to 14 is a lie. Uh, really low dangerous, corrosive, a little higher, but still acidic. We've got some different kinds of foods and such. Uh, up near neutral, we've got some other fluids. Some of these can actually be either acid or base, but they're close to neutral. As we move up into basic high pHs, we've got detergents, ammonia, cleaning stuff. Uh, we don't eat those. And at even higher concentrations, really high pH, people are soluble in bases. Don't touch those. All right, quick review of Algebra 2 before we jump into pH, because we need logs. 10, log base 10 of 1,000 is what? Ask yourself, 10 to what power? Oh, that power equals 1,000. 10 to the third power equals 1,000. Picture this little spiral. Sometimes I picture maybe putting on a shoe, curling your toes up. Okay, that might be a helpful image for you. 10 to some power equals this. We're going to do nice easy numbers like this. None of these decimal logs in that business um, today. A lot of words here. Focus on the stuff in the yellow boxes. Okay, people, uh, you don't necessarily need to write all of this stuff down. P means negative log of something. So pH is negative log of H, positive hydrogen or hydronium ions, same difference. All right, so if we have a 10 to the negative seventh molar concentration of hydrogen ions, well, we ask ourselves, 10 to some power equals 10 to the negative seventh. Hey, that's negative seven. Well, and then we take the negative of that, we get seven. So essentially, we're taking this exponent, flipping the sign, there's our answer, okay? even a little bit easier going from pH to a concentration. pH is 1. Hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the negative 1. There it is. 0.1 is the concentration. Now we can also P other things. We P H, now we can P O H. Negative log of hydroxide ion concentration works the same way. 10 to the negative third molar. 10 to the negative third equals 10 to the negative third. Go figure. Flip the sign because it's negative. POH equals 3. You're just flipping the sign of that exponent. That's why I highlighted it there. POH equals 8. 10 to the negative eighth is the concentration. These things relate together. We have an equilibrium reaction. You saw this before under Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. Water is both an acid and it's a base. Every now and again, we have water that reacts and produces some hydronium and some hydroxide ions in solution. Not a lot of them, but enough. Okay, so here we come. We've got, we can write an equilibrium expression. We'll talk more about those a bunch later. But we have a constant that's the result of multiplying these two concentrations together a little bit closer in here. All right, hydrogen ion times hydroxide ion concentration is always the same number. You can change these numbers, but they'll multiply to be the same thing. You can P that equation. Let's do it. Property of logs, we get these things separated out. PKW is pH plus POH. pH and POH. Hey, that's nice. They're related through this weird looking thing. Well, good thing we, it's a constant. We know what that number is negative log of 10 to the negative 14th. Hey, lucky for us, it's a nice even number. 
comes out to be 14 for pKW. So the thing you need to remember is that at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, pH and pOH add together to make 14. So now you've got three equations. You can use them to solve all kinds of problems. If I have pH, you can find pOH because they add to make 14. 6 plus 8 is 14. If I give you something else, you can find another concentration. So pOH is 3. I would find the pH first because I know pH is related to this concentration. 3 plus 11 is 14. 10 to the negative 11th is the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, spend a little bit more time with that if you need to. Mr. Kahn might explain a bit differently as well. Something I want to point out down here, if you have a pH of 0, yes, 0. All that means is the hydrogen ion or hydronium ion concentration is 10 to the negative 0 or 10 to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so that's 1 molar. That's not a problem. You had 2 molar hydrochloric acid, which had 2 molar hydrogen ions uh, in your weighing by redox lab. That had a slightly negative pH. Not a problem. It's math. It's not magic. Okay, so neutral is 7. We see the concentrations are equal there. High pHs, you have more hydroxide, less hydrogen ions. Uh, this is going to be your warm-up tomorrow morning. Well, actually afternoon when I see you. Uh, so we've got pH of 5, find the pOH, find these concentrations. Same thing down here, from pOH, find pH, find the concentrations. Can you work backwards from the concentrations to pH, pOH, over to the other concentration? All right, there's your warm-up. Now, quick word about the buffers that we looked at. Buffers resist changes in pH. So the ones that you saw, we had this buffer here stayed yellow. Remember this universal indicator indicates pH. So we had a weak acid and its conjugate base in solution together. It kept the pH pretty steady right there in the acidic range. I had a different buffer that kept it steady right around neutral green and another buffer that kept it steady right around the right in the basic range blue maybe more purplish in one of the classes. Okay so you should have this information already. Maybe you don't have this. We're going to come back and talk about this quite a bit more with um, uh, equilibrium a little bit. But for right now, buffers resist changes in pH. One buffer, two buffers, three buffers that resist the changes in pH. So make sure you bring those notes to class. We'll check out that warm-up uh, and have you work on some more problems in groups tomorrow. Bye.